So today I'm looking at replacing a Lenovo ThinkPad X230 touchpad. And this is what it looks like here in the package. We'll be taking that out shortly after I take out some screws and remove the palm rest and the keyboard and the battery. Uh, so this palm, this uh, touchpad, touchpad board is acting erratically. Um, Hopefully this is the solution, and even if it's not, this will still be a tutorial on how to replace it. So, we'll start by taking the battery out. And you'll notice on the bottom of the ThinkPad there's little labels indicating screws for the keyboard and for the palm rest. And there's one, two, no, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven screws total. So let's All right, so seven screws taken out. And now we're able to gently push up on the keyboard. And you can take either a small flathead screwdriver or any kind of plastic guitar pick or anything that you have around you and just pry up the keyboard from the bottom. Just making note that your not doing any undue damage or uh, breaking any plastic bits. But it should be fairly easy to take out. And once you have that, you can just disconnect it from the board. Disconnect the ribbon cable from the board. And what we have here is the ribbon cable. Let's zoom in a little bit actually. Looking at the ribbon cable, for the touchpad and in my case it's purple and I think it has the letters M B on it so let's lift up the little latch here and pull it right out there's a little tab that makes it easy to pull out and with the screws out it should be able to just lift the palm rest up again being mindful about little plastic tabs that might break Okay, we'll push this front and we have the underneath the innards of the palm rest. So this is actually my first time taking one of these out and what I'm guessing is we just have to remove the screw here, 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 and here, but I'm going to take my new uh, touchpad out of the package here and just double check. Okay, yeah. Came with four screws. I have to assume that there's only four screws to take out. So we'll start top right corner. So it looks like we have to take these two screws out as well and disconnect the ribbon cable from what I assume, without looking at any documentation, yeah, is the uh, fingerprint sensor.
So, so far this is pretty easy and still we're just at six minutes so far. So it shouldn't take too long to do this. And it looks like we have just two little, oh, it's not very in focus. Okay, the ribbon cable plugs in right here and we'll just have to take a little screwdriver and push those little plastic tabs down. Great. So I'll just place that ribbon over to the side just in case I need to use it to troubleshoot later on. And I'll gently, looks like this is just held down by a bit of tape. If I'm not incorrect. There we go. Oh, it looks like there's a couple little plastic tabs on either end of the touchpad to pay attention to and try not to break. Great. Ooh. Put that off to the side. And let's see about fitting in the new one. Oh, this has big plastic tabs on it. Okay. Okay, so there's two little slots. I'll just focus here. Just to indicate. There's a slot, little slot here for this to fit into. And it's on either end. So you just have to be careful that you don't break the little plastic pieces again. There we go. Thankfully it's not that hard. And again, something I definitely love about ThinkPads. Okay. Okay, there's two little slots here. That you'll line up this plastic or this metal bracket with, and you'll see it's pretty obvious they're sticking out on either end of the bracket here. So it feels like this is pretty secure now. So I'm going to try putting those screws back in. Just wanted to get the satisfaction of the little click here. And we'll place this uh, fingerprint sensor board back on where it's supposed to go.
know, my hands are going to be covering this, but I'm going to you know, try to position myself a little bit better here. Just wanting to plug this ribbon cable back into the little board here. Okay, that feels pretty snug to me. Okay, so my video cut off there, but all I was doing was fitting in a little ribbon cable into the finger, fingerprint sensor board. Just takes a little time and patience. All right. And we're just placing this bracket back above the board. Hopefully don't have to do that again to reseat the cable, but it feels like it's pretty secure. Pretty secure connection. All right. So now the uh, moment of truth. I'm going to just place this back here and I'm going to plug in the cable, plug in the keyboard, fire this thing on and see if our problem is fixed. And having a set of tweezers sometimes helps with these little ribbon cables. So they do have a little piece you can latch onto to pick it up. It makes it a little bit easier to plug in for these small devices. Great, easy. There we go. It's not the greatest lighting from my uh, from my angle. Okay, excellent. Okay, so everything's relatively in place, and. Now it's time to plug this thing in and test it out. Wishful thinking, definitely wishful thinking. All right. Okay, well, what I'm seeing is a similar, similar problem. 
So I'm just going to pause the video here and try to troubleshoot that. And the problem is that it's as if it's constantly, the left clicker is constantly being pressed. So I'm just going to clarify that I didn't make a mistake here. Okay, so as it turns out, the problem was not with the touchpad. So this video will remain a tutorial on how to replace the touchpad because that was still a success even though it didn't have to be done. Um, the problem is the keyboard. It turned out to be the keyboard. So something with the other keyboard was plugged that was plugged in. And now there's a... Uh, this keyboard's been through some wear and tear and there's some gunk inside of it and stuff like that and that might be contributing to it or it might just be a hardware failure of some other kind. Um, but it was as if the left key, the left uh, mouse cursor key here, uh, button is what I'm looking for, was pressed down at all times. And we can see what I replaced in my, uh, I put in my replacement keyboard and on my spare parts keyboard and it seems to work completely fine. So, lesson learned and something to check off the troubleshooting box. So I'll still consider this a win. Um, so hopefully that helped you out and if that happened to be your problem, awesome. If you're just here to see how to replace the touchpad, you still got that too. So I hope you learned something and Thanks a lot for watching.